Uh, at this point, I think we'll move on to the southern tier and listen to a presentation from uh, Dr. Harvey Stinger and Tom Tranter. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor, uh, and thank you to the SIET Board, Commissioners, um, President Calieros. Um, I'm, pl I'm pleased to be here. I feel kind of humbled to represent 500,000 people back in the southern tier with some of the ideas that we've been generating over the last uh, couple of months, uh, but somebody has to do it. And Tom's not going to do it. I'm going to do it. <laughs> Tom will answer the questions that, that I can't answer. Um, let me get right into it. Certainly, we had to do a lot of research. We had been doing research over the past four years as part of the Regional Economic Development Council, but the opportunity to use the University of Buffalo Regional Institute to dig deeper into the data was very helpful for us to really key in on some of the industries that we have that we see that now we can uh, look at a little more closely and can enhance. Uh, we held region-wide workshops. We had a total of 18 different workshops that had more than 350 people attend. Uh, we set up a website where we could collect white paper ideas on standard format. We had over 100 white papers that were submitted in, in the couple of week period that we opened that website. We've interviewed municipal and business leaders, sometimes one-on-one, -on -one, sometimes in small groups, and the idea pipeline uh, expanded from the website to the individual conversations. Uh, we then ran an online survey. We had developed four initiatives as we were uh, thinking that would be the best number for initiatives. We ran an online survey. We had over 500 responses. And what was interesting is that the responses were so strongly in favor of our four initiatives, I've never seen uh, an agreement. More than 85% of the respondees uh, agreed with our four initiatives across the board. And I'm going to get into a little more detail, perhaps, than the Finger Lakes. Uh, our four initiatives is our strength in food and agriculture. I'll talk a little bit more about each of these uh, as I go through the rest of the presentation. Uh, advanced industries, specifically in the area of transportation equipment, which is our niche. Revitalizing the greater Binghamton area, which is the triple cities, Binghamton, Johnson City, and Endicott. Uh, Endicott, certainly the home of IBM. Uh, people remember uh, when they were there. They're not there anymore. Uh, Johnson City, Endicott Johnson Shoe Factory, and Binghamton, kind of the heart of the, um, the cultural center of the southern tier. And then fourth is to attract talent, entrepreneurs, and investment, and to really put that as a focal point and an initiative of our plan. Let me dig a little bit deeper into food and agriculture. Uh, trucking distances, about 500 miles uh, in a day's travel for our trucks. Uh, so we look at one third of the US population is within 500 miles of the southern tier. It's great because it also intersects with a lot of the roads, the major roads and rails. Uh, you've got Route 88, 81, 86, 99, and 390 all located in the southern tier. Uh, $5.2 billion in agricultural output in, a, in, a, in an annual year. Uh, and that's about 10% of the annual output of agricultural products in the Northeast, which is New York State and New England. 45,000 farm jobs, 11% of the region's employment, more, more farms than any other region in the state, 6,600 farms. We have the world's number two college of agriculture at Cornell University, and certainly we've got water like everybody else in New York has water. The nice thing about our water is it runs right past us. It's rivers, Susquehanna, Shemung, Shenango, and Delaware. So we're working hard, especially with the focus and the efforts of Cornell University School of Agriculture to develop new technologies to increase production. Certainly the, the water shortage in California has made the economics of controlled environment growing more viable. And so that's indoor growing. It's code word for growing things indoors. Uh, hydroponic, but these are very energy intensive. And so the renewable energy sources are going to be critical to their success. So developing solar and wind near these controlled environment agricultural uh, plants will be important. Improving food processing, support and facilities, uh, cleaning, cutting, packaging food is, is so critical now to the high value added to foods in the stores. Uh, the network of distribution hubs that I talked about, the road and rail networks through the southern tier. What do we need to do? We need to aggressively market 
our region as the, could be perhaps the center focal point of agriculture in, in New York State, uh, certainly stretching up along the tips of Seneca and Cuga uh, Lake as well. And also expanding workforce development in some of these new technology areas, such as the controlled environment and food processing. Number two initiative is in advanced manufacturing. This is specifically targeted at transportation equipment. We have a, almost a dozen companies in the southern tier that are manufacturing products for the transportation equipment market. Lockheed Martin, uh, Raymond Corporation, BAE Hybrid Bus Systems, Alstrom Train, Corning makes diesel filters for, for tractor trailers and trucks. Um, the new market dynamics of these fields are important to keep up with and how are we going to keep up with the, the transformation. It's interesting, when we looked at patents within our region, we had over 2,100 patents issued to the southern tier in the last five years and over 400 patents issued to Corning in, last, in just last year. Uh, we have 34,000 manufacturing workers, 11,000 of them in the transportation industry. And that, if you look at the location, the location quotient, the location quotient, that's an 8.9, which is a very high location quotient for an industry. Uh, and also what's important is high wages, two times the regional average, and also note 50% of the workforce does not require a bachelor's degree, which helps us uh, uh, have an entry point for hard to place workers. What are we going to do to advance this area? We're going to be putting a lot of commitment into innovation and infusion of technologies. We have two great universities, Binghamton and Cornell, that can add research activities that can support these industries, similar to the Manufacturing Works program at, in Buffalo. Uh, however, our support would be in the area of embedded software. Uh, that's, the, uh, in, that's the area that the local companies have, have identified as their biggest need. We also have a need for a test track in the area uh, where we can test some of these transportation products more effectively. And as I note, strengthening the advanced, I'm sorry, can uh, Yes, and uh, making sure that we retain the graduates from the engineering schools in the southern tier. Cornell and Binghamton University graduating more than 3,000 students each year in engineering and applied sciences, and we need to keep them in the area to uh, populate this workforce. And then when I get to the greater Binghamton area, which is the uh, region uh, called the Triple Cities, uh, we cr we're beginning the construction of a high-tech incubator in downtown Binghamton, which will be focused on health sciences and advanced materials. We're beginning the construction of a school of pharmacy and pharmaceutical sciences in Johnson City, and we're acquiring property around that building in order to promote the uh, move of pharmaceutical industries into the Johnson City area. And then on the western part of the region, the Endicott, which is the old IBM location, uh, looking at more advanced manufacturing applications for that facility. And then lastly, we want to promote our area as an innovative culture. Uh, not many people know it, but Rod Serling grew up in Binghamton, and so you kind of think of that as our, as our person who gives you our imagination at times. Um, attracting talent, entrepreneurs, and investment is not easy into an area that's been uh, perhaps in a downturn, uh, but adding to some of the strengths that we have, such as Watkins Glen Speedway, the, the Corning Museum of Glass, the southern tips of Seneca and Cuga Lake, the highest density of waterfalls in the northeast region, uh, even fly fishing in the Delaware River. There's a lot of great things to do in the uh, southern tier and a lot of great places to live. <clears throat> And I'm not going to tell you any more because if I did tell you any more, we wouldn't have a proposal to submit <laughs> other than the fact is uh, everybody's going to have a similar presentation today. We're going to have underused assets. We're going to have great smart people that think they can do better jobs with those underused assets. It's going to be the secret sauce. And if anybody's got the secret sauce uh, to pull all these th things together, I think that's where the winning's going to happen. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Sanger. Thank you very much. Any questions? Commissioner Boone has a question. Yes, thank you. Um, you talked about um, retaining your STEM grads um, population, the importance of that in your workforce. And I know you don't want to get too granular here, but let me ask you this question. How have the connections that you've built through the REDC process helped, um, how is that helping you prepare students for 
uh, careers and, and fields with these high wages uh, in the advanced uh, manufacturing technology area. If you could speak to that. Well, I, my experience has been a dean of engineering for 12 years at two other universities, so the applied nature of the engineering curriculum always got students ready for that entry job. It was one of the strengths of the engineering programs. Cornell does a great job with their engineering co-op program. About a third of their students are out on work assignments every semester. Uh, Binghamton's engineering program has been growing over the last few years, graduating a little more than 1,000 undergraduates and graduate students each year. Um, undergraduates sometimes can't hit the ground running as fast, uh, but we have strong PhD programs at both Cornell and Binghamton University. And trying to encourage them and giving them the support that they need to perhaps take that idea from their laboratory that they've been working on for three or four years and then turn it into a commercial product is something that we're, we're encouraging. Um, some of our startup New York companies are actually postdocs uh, working in our laboratories and graduate students graduating from our university. Uh, and just making it a, a fun place to live sometimes is as important as giving them the opportunities of an incubator and Startup New York benefits. Uh, and so I think you have to blend all those things together to, to retain them. Okay. Thank you. Uh, one last brief question for Mr. Toby. Okay, thank you very much. Um, with regard to agriculture, um, we've noticed that each of the regions has agriculture as a, as a strong component of its economy. <clears throat> um, and New York State is really blessed with the things you mentioned, water and good soils and, and uh, active farming community. <clears throat> um, but you need other things also to succeed. And I think two of them uh, are markets, uh, large markets and infrastructure to get to them. And it seems the southern tier may be very well positioned, particularly for the, for the vast New York City metro market, uh, to take advantage of what's, I think, the largest actual market in the country covering the three states. Uh, can you comment a little more on, on how you see the southern tier taking advantage of that location, your, your good location, to that vast market and, and, and to enhance uh, Metro, not the 500 miles, but the far shorter distance to New York City? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a systems approach, you know, working with uh, Willow, Food, Willow, Food, Willow Run Foods and Maine's Foods and Cisco out of Syracuse, understanding how to get product to market in the most efficient way. It's, it's kind of an industrial engineering problem to solve. But also Philadelphia is actually a shorter drive than New York City for us, uh, the northern New Jersey area. So we were right. We are in an ideal place. I said one third of the population within one day's drive for a, for a tractor trailer. Um, expanding that concept and improving the warehouse capabilities, the road access capabilities. Uh, one project that was funded by the state last year uh, was to convert a, a, partial, a portion of a fleet of tractor trailers to natural gas so that they could have a cleaner emission fleet and improve their, their um, environmental standards. So I think there's a small things that we're going to be developing in our proposals. We'll have some uh, URI projects that will focus on warehousing and systems approach to delivery. Uh, and we hope that they'll be some of the things that will be unique for our area. Because you're right, we are located pretty close to New York City as well as Pennsylvania. Okay, thank you very much. All the fresh stuff to New York, the rest of the stuff can go to Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs>